Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Greetings and welcome to all of you. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Sydney, Nova Scotia. And the Mass is offered for a special intention the daily televised Mass brings meaning to the lives of many thousand Canadians across this land, and they join with me in thanking you for this telecast on this, the Feast of the Transfiguration. And so we begin as we should begin all things, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We take a moment to acknowledge that we stand in the presence of our God, that we always haven't expressed gratitude for the way that, or for the gifts that we have received by the way we've lived. And so we ask forgiveness of God and we ask forgiveness of each other. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. And you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sons and daughters, grant, we pray, to your servants that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of Peter. We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard his voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this, as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice, let the many coastlands 
And all the peoples behold his glory. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. For you, O Lord, are Most High over all the earth. You are exalted for And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to the Lord. And Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. And suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to Jesus. And they appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let's make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But Peter didn't know what he was saying. And while he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. And then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And the disciples kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things that they had seen. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise all three of the synoptic gospels, that is Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all recount the transfiguration, but each has a, a distinctive accent. While Matthew and Mark located after Jesus had begun his journey to Jerusalem, in Luke, the gospel we heard today, he locates it before when Jesus was determined to journey to Jerusalem. He took and made a choice. Matthew and Mark do not specify the content of the conversation, while Luke recounts the conversation with Moses and Elijah about the departure of Jesus, his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Luke also has Jesus at prayer a constant theme in his gospel. But unfortunately, the first clause of the first verse of today's reading was left out. It states, and I quote, about eight days after Jesus had said all this, he took Peter, James, and John up to the mountain to pray. I think the eight days helps us to contextualize the event and its meaning for the disciples. What Jesus had said eight days earlier was, if you will be a follower of mine, deny yourself and take up your cross each day and follow me. I think Jesus was preparing the disciples for the journey to Jerusalem 
and the consequences of the mission that he had received. The other event that I think prepared the three of them was when they were invited to go to the house of Jairus. There Jesus took Jairus' daughter by the hand, told her to get up, watched her walk around, and then told the people to give her something to eat. On that occasion, life took over from death as if it was the most natural thing in the world. It too was a remote preparation for what was to transpire. Another occasion was when the three were invited by Jesus to accompany him to the Garden of Gethsemane. But Gustavo Gutierrez tells us it's quite significant that Luke uses the word exodus to refer to Jesus' departure and journey to Jerusalem. And he points out that it's a departure that allows coming to life, to resurrection, the passage to the promised land, to the reign of God. But most importantly, calling death an exodus means that death is not the end of Jesus' plan. That's the conviction that has to sustain the hope of the disciples and our hope as well. As followers of Jesus who are invited to take up our cross daily, we must proclaim a kingdom, the reign of God, which encompasses every aspect of human existence. But it has to be an exodus for us as well, a departure from everything that present, prevents us from living in full communion with God and with others. The exodus is going to involve painful and challenging moments. In the reading, we find Peter enjoying it, and he wants to stay where he is and put up the tents and not necessarily be a follower of Jesus. Father Dennis McBride points out that Peter's suggestion is a typical human reaction that echoes down through history to this day. If in doubt, build. The desire to build a shrine or a holy place is a typical response. But as Father Scott Lewis points out, this can anchor an experience of the transcendent to a particular place and rob it of its deeper meaning and its power. The transfiguration reminds us that to be a follower of Jesus, life has to be lived in the here and now, day after day. As Peter confirms in his letter, we do well to pay attention to the prophetic message and be attentive as to a lamp shining in the dark. It's as if he were conscious of the words that he heard that day and is saying, in effect, listen to him, for he is the light of the world. As Father McBride asked, is it any wonder that Jesus is radiant and aglow? He has an answer to his prayer from the Father. The deepest part of Jesus is called forth. The Father doesn't just recognize him, but recognizes him in love as the chosen one. And that transfigures Jesus. The transfiguration enables Jesus to make the most difficult journey in his life, to take the road that leads to Calvary. But transfiguration is not a solitary event in the gospel, but one that happens over and over again. Throughout his ministry, Jesus transfigured many people, the broken, the wounded, the lame, and those who were speak, seeking life. He called to the deepest part of people and transfigured them by the power of God's love, the same power that transfigured Jesus himself. I think we can understand better the transfiguration when we ask, what would it take to transfigure us? What would it take to transfigure the people that we know? Our surrender to the power of the Holy Spirit opens us up to be transfigured by the power of God's love. And at the same time, we're challenged to transfigure each other by the power of God's love operative and active in each and every one of us. You know, we really don't need to climb a mountain to encounter Jesus or encounter God. The face of Jesus is all around us. It's where we walk every day. It's only waiting for us to ask for the humility to perceive it and to recognize it and to respond to it with all our hearts. Please join me as we pray. 
And we pray this day for that grace that each of us may open ourselves and allow ourselves to be vulnerable to the Holy Spirit and let the power of God work in our lives so that we too may be transfigured. And for that grace for each and every one of us, we pray to the Lord. We bring here this day the many people who join us via television and for the many intentions that they have asked that we remember and bring to the altar. And so for them and for all those intentions, we pray to the Lord. In a very special way, we pray, we pray for those people who live in conflict, who suffer violence, that they will know the peace and justice that God has destined for all of us. And for them, we pray to the Lord. And all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice, mine and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. And sanctify, O Lord, we pray, these offerings here, made to celebrate the glorious, transfiguration, the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendor, Cleanse us from the stains of sin. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Jesus Christ. For on the, on the festival that we celebrate this day, you bid your church to rejoice, and so too you strengthen her by the example of the life of Jesus. Teach her, teach us by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and giving it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat from it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, he, when supper was ended, 
He took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the blood of, <clears throat> for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and the entire church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And faithful to the teaching of our Savior, we pray just as he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to each other then a sign of that peace. of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world, and happy are we who are called to this supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for the dying? 
May Christ, who was crucified for your sake, free you from excruciating pain. May Christ, who died for you, free you from the death that never ends. May Christ, the Son of the living God, set you in the evergreen loveliness of his paradise. And may he, the true shepherd, recognize you as one of his own. And so, having taken your place in the ranks of the blessed, may you enjoy the happiness of heaven forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, Jesus, whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go in the peace of Christ, glo glorifying the Lord by our lives. And have a good day. Our thanks to an anonymous donor from Sydney, Nova Scotia, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. Please remember that all requests for special prayers are read by Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and Father Fitzpatrick, and your intentions are carried with them to the altar for the celebration of Holy Mass. of your favorite hymns from the past six missions. These 25 hymns will take you out of yourself and for a time at least put you in the presence of God. And he will bring